If you're creating content heavy websites, then having the right kind of call to action inside of those pieces of content is extremely important. Now you might've set up some kind of static call to action that's built into your post template that shows up across every post, or you might go into each individual post and create its own call to action. But in this video, we're gonna take the best of both worlds and create a dynamic call to action system. We're actually gonna explore two different ways to do this. One where we create a static call to action that we can show or hide just using a checkbox. And the other option where we can create a completely dynamic call to action, again, by checking a box or unchecking a box. And we can keep that design and layout consistent across all of our posts while being able to customize the actual text and content of that CTA on a page by page basis. Now, I know that might all sound a little bit confusing right now, but I promise if you stick around to the end of this tutorial, you're going to have a light bulb moment and see how this system can set you up for a lot more scalable and maintainable content in the long run. So let's go ahead and jump in and get started. All right, so just to show you a little bit about what we already have set up, I've gone ahead and created an element to display our content template for our single post. So if that sounds a little confusing or if you're not exactly sure what all that terminology means, then I will have a video popping up here that explains how to create custom blog post layouts inside of Generate Press and Generate Blocks. Essentially, that's what I've already done here. It includes the post title, a featured image, all of the dynamic content from the post. So that's bringing in all the post content. And then if we scroll to the bottom, we just have a simple footer. Now, the first thing we're gonna do here is actually add a little snippet of code that's gonna give us the ability to register two new hook areas. One is gonna to be to register a hook before the dynamic content block, and the other is to register a hook at the end of it. These don't actually exist inside Generate Blocks, but my good buddy Taylor Drayson went ahead and wrote some code that he shared with us to use inside this tutorial, and of course, I'll link to it down in the video description below. So the first thing we need to do is actually install that little snippet of code that's gonna allow us to be able to hook in our calls to action in these two different areas. So for the purposes of this demo, I'm actually just gonna use the code snippets plugin, but if you prefer, you can also use your function.php file inside of your child theme. So we'll go ahead and just hit add new, and we'll do before and after dynamic content hook. I'm gonna go ahead and grab this code from off screen. Like I said, you'll be able to get all this inside of the video description. And all it's doing is just re registering these two spots to add hooks, which one is before the dynamic content and the other is after that dynamic content. So we'll go ahead and hit save changes here. And now we've got that registered. So we'll be able to use that as we progress through this demo. Now, like I said, I want to be able to bring in different calls to action dynamically by just clicking a box on the back end of a post. This makes it really easy for end users to be able to add different kinds of calls to action. And it means that we can build in different kinds of systems for different calls to action. For instance, if you have a blog post about SEO, you might wanna show the call to action that has to do with SEO instead of a generic call to action. Now to do this, we're actually gonna use ACF and a custom taxonomy. Now, if you've not used custom taxonomies before and this sounds a little scary, it's actually really simple to do. We're just gonna fill in a couple fields here, click a couple buttons and we're up and running. This is just gonna give us the ability to show and hide these different calls to action based on a checkbox inside the back end of our post. So let's go ahead and dive in to getting ACF set up with our custom taxonomy. So here on the back end of the site, I'm gonna go ahead and go to plugins and add new. We're gonna search for ACF, which should bring up advanced custom fields as the first result. We'll go ahead and install that and activate it. Now here under ACF, we can go to taxonomies and we can click add new. Now here we're gonna give this taxonomy a label. This is only gonna be for our use on the back end, so it just needs to be something clear, but the public isn't gonna see it. For this case, I'm just gonna go ahead and call this post features, and we'll call it post feature for the singular label. It will automatically go ahead and make a taxonomy key, so you don't have to worry about that. Next, we need to decide which post types this taxonomy is gonna show up for. In our case, we're gonna do post, but you have the option to use custom post types, pages, whatever kind of different post you have registered. Next, we wanna make this high article, which means we're gonna have the ability to use checkboxes like categories are built into WordPress instead of having to type something in like tags are set up. This is just gonna make it easier to find what we register, although e either one would work perfectly. 
The last thing we want to do is go down here to advanced and under URLs, we're going to turn this publicly queryable off because we don't need to create any kind of URLs for posts for this taxonomy or for an archive or anything like that. This just makes it a little bit cleaner so we're not registering new URLs on the website. Once that's set up, we can go ahead and hit save changes. And now we can see that under posts, we have this new taxonomy set up called post features. We'll go ahead and click into that now and we can register a couple of these. The first thing we're gonna do is register one called newsletter CTA, which is gonna be the first example we work on inside this demo. The next one, we're gonna call this dynamic CTA and we'll go ahead and add this post feature as well. We're gonna be using this one later on. So you might be wondering where these are actually gonna show up. What we'll do is we'll go into all of our posts here and we'll edit this first post. Now you can see over on the right hand side, we have our categories like normal, we have our tags like normal, but now we have this new post features meta box. And you can see we have the two different kinds of features we registered, which was our dynamic CTA, as well as our newsletter CTA. And we won't check any of these right now. We need to go ahead and go get some of this set up, but now you'll see where these are coming into play and it'll all make a little bit more sense as we continue setting this up. Looking at our post again, I've decided I wanna put a newsletter CTA before the dynamic content inside of our post. So we're gonna use that before dynamic content hook to do that, but we need to go ahead and design whatever this call to action looks like. I have gone ahead already and set up a form inside of Fluent Forms here for a newsletter sign up. So you can see we have our subscription form. So that's already ready to go, but we'll need to go ahead and create this call to action as an element. So here inside elements, we'll click add new element and we'll choose a block as the element type. We'll go ahead and hit create. And now we can call this whatever we'd like. I want this to match those taxonomies so everything's really clear. So we're just gonna call this newsletter CTA. Now we need to go ahead and set up a couple of things that are gonna work all the magic inside of this template to make it show up dynamically. The first one is over here on the right hand side under element type, we are gonna leave this as hook. And for our hook name, we're gonna scroll all the way down to custom hook. Now inside the code that Taylor gave us, we actually have those two new hook locations registered. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab this first one, which is just before dynamic content. Between each one of those words is an underscore, but we can easily remember that that we have before and we have after. So this will tell us where we want this to show up inside of our post. Now we need to set the location. This is important because we only want this to show up on a specific post type with our custom taxonomy applied. Basically, we only want this to show up when we click the checkbox for newsletter CTA. So here under the location, we're gonna scroll down here under post and under post feature, we're gonna choose newsletter CTA. So now with this set and this custom hook registered, all we have to do is design what we want, and then we can use the checkbox to show or hide this CTA depending on our needs. So let's go ahead and design this out. This is gonna show our preview width on the back end. I know that our post content is fairly narrow, so I'm just gonna change this so I have something a little bit more realistic to look at. So in here, we're just gonna use our Fluent Forms block. We're gonna choose our subscription form and this will bring in that subscription form we need. We might even wanna add a headline and we could say, subscribe to our newsletter. And I'll probably wanna make this a little bit smaller and that should work. So we'll go ahead and hit publish on this and we'll go ahead and try to get this working inside one of our blog posts. To do that, we'll head back to our post, we'll go to all post, and we can use this first post as an example. I wanna go ahead and open this up in a new tab so we can see that it doesn't have this call to action right now. But if we scroll down here under post features and we decide we wanna have the newsletter call to action on this specific post, we can just check this newsletter CTA button, hit update, and go to the front end and refresh. And you'll see now we have the subscribe to our newsletter with the form showing up. So it's really just as easy now as hitting a checkbox and having this different CTA show up where you want it. I hope by now you're starting to see just how powerful a little system like this is. If you've been creating callouts inside of your blog posts one by one as just static content, then if that ever needs to be updated in the future, you'd have to go to each blog post individually and update that. What we've created here is a single source of truth. So our newsletter call to action set up as a block 
element means that we can go to one place and update this call to action in the future and everywhere we've used it across the entire website it's going to update all at once to make this even better it's just a checkbox to add or remove this from any blog post we need to so it doesn't get much simpler than that however we can make this a lot more complex and bring even more dynamic content into it so that's what we're going to do next with this dynamic cta let's dive in and take a look at how it's going to work so what I've decided for this dynamic call to action is we're going to actually put this after the post content. What we're going to do here is create some kind of design that has a call to action for somebody to sign up for something or visit another page. What's going to be really neat about this one is we're actually going to use custom fields for everything so we can change whatever that post content is on a post by post basis, but the layout's going to stay the same based on how we set up our element. That sounds a little bit confusing, but let's jump in here and take a look at how it works. And I think it all makes sense in the end. So what we're gonna have to do now is go ahead and register some new custom fields. So here under ACF, we're gonna click field groups and we're gonna click add new. So for this, we're gonna call this dynamic CTA just for our own reference. And we're gonna add a few different fields. The first one is gonna be a text field. We'll call this dynamic CTA or DCTA for short. We'll call this headline. It will automatically fill in the field name. We'll add another field and we'll change this to a text area because this is going to be our DCTA description where we can have a little bit more text. Again, we'll add another field. Text is fine because this is going to be our DCTA button text. So this is going to be the text that goes on a button. We'll add another one for a URL field and this will be our DCTA URL. And lastly, we'll add one more field that has an image, and this can be our DCTA image. Now that we have all those set up, we can scroll down to the bottom here, and we can change this to the post taxonomy is equal to dynamic CTA. This way, these custom fields are only gonna show up when we've checked that box for a dynamic CTA. We'll go ahead and save these changes and we'll go test to make sure that that's working properly. Here in all posts, I'll go ahead and open up the second post and we'll scroll to the bottom of the post content here and you can see there are no additional custom fields included with this post. However, when we click dynamic CTA, we can see all of our custom fields are now showing. So this means these don't show up when we don't have it checked and they do show up when we do. That way it keeps it clean and out of our way unless we're using it. Now these actually aren't gonna show up on the front end until we create our element, but let's go ahead and fill them in here so we don't have to come back to it later. So we'll just call this dynamic headline. We'll call, we'll put in some website Ipsum here for the description text. We'll call this button text just so we know that it's working. And for the URL, we'll make it go to the adminbar.com. Lastly, we can create our dynamic call to action image. And I'll just go ahead and put this image of a book in. We'll go ahead and update this post. So now all that custom field data is in there, even though, like I said, we still need to set up a template for it to all show. To do that, we're gonna go back to elements. We're gonna click add element, and we're gonna go to a block type. We'll hit create, and we'll call this dynamic CTA. Again, over here on the right-hand side under hook, we're gonna change this to custom hook, and this will be after dynamic content. And under the location, we're gonna choose post feature dynamic CTA. So that's our little magic sauce again to get this working. So like I said, I know this is gonna be a little bit skinnier. So I'm gonna go ahead and preview that about in the right proportion. And we're gonna add a container here. We'll go ahead and give it some padding, maybe 24 pixels. We'll give it a slight border here and give that border a light gray color. We'll change the background to just a light gray so it stands out a little bit, and we can give it a bit of a border radius here. Now inside of it, remember we create a custom fields for a headline, a description, a button, and an image, so we need to lay all that out. So we'll go ahead and hit grid. We'll do a two column grid. We'll make this first one maybe 25% and the right hand column 75%. We need to go back and give them a little bit of gap in between each other, and we can go ahead and first add our image. So in here, we'll search for the generate blocks image block, and we can go down to dynamic data. So we wanna go ahead and enable the dynamic data. 
Now we are gonna have to grab the exact name of each one of these fields, and I find it's easier to copy and paste those so we don't make any errors. So I'm gonna go ahead and jump into the back end under ACF, under field groups. We'll edit this dynamic CTA field group, and now when we hover over these names, we can just copy and paste them by clicking on them. So for this image, we're gonna go ahead and click the image, and now we've got that copied to our keyboard. We can change the image source to post meta, and we can paste in what we just copied to our clipboard, which was the DCTA underscore image. So now on the front end, this is actually gonna show whatever image we put inside that custom field. All right, here we're gonna go ahead and add a headline. H2 might work for this. Of course, that's gonna depend on how your blog post is structured, but we're gonna enable dynamic data again. We're gonna change this to post meta. And now we need to grab the name for our headline, which is this here. It's copied to my clipboard. Now I can paste it in and click on it to add it. That looks a little bit big, so I'm gonna use one of my presets here for a smaller headline. Now we need to add in our description. So again, I'm gonna add another headline block. We'll change this to a paragraph. We'll scroll down to our dynamic data, enable it, turn on post meta, and for our post meta field, we need to go ahead and grab this name and paste it in. And lastly, we need our button. So I'm gonna go ahead and add a generate blocks button and we need to enable the dynamic data for this. Of course, for this, we're gonna need dynamic data for the button text and the button URL. So first we'll go ahead and grab our DCTA button text and under the content source, we're gonna change this to post meta and paste in that field. Now under the link source, we need to grab the DCTA URL, jump back in here and under the link source again, post meta and paste in this field. So now we've connected all these dynamic fields to show up inside of this call to action. So we'll go ahead and publish this and we can go on the back end and test and make sure this is working. So here under post, all post, we'll go ahead and view this post and edit it. And we can see right now we have the dynamic CTA turned on, which shows all of our custom fields at the bottom and we've already filled these out. So we can scroll down to the bottom of this post and we should see here, now our dynamic CTA is working. We have some design issues we still need to work out here, but we can see it's showing up. And of course, if we turn this off and hit update, refresh on the front end, that dynamic CTA is now gone. What's really cool about this solution is we can design one layout for a call to action inside of that element, but we can change the content of that call to action on a post by post basis. This means in the future, if we ever need to go change the layout or design of this, we have one single source of truth inside that element, but we can get really granular with our calls to action inside of each post. For example, if you were writing a post about SEO, you could have a call out that specifically takes people to information about your SEO services. Same if it was for a web design post, you could take them to your web design services. This gives you a really dynamic option to create different kinds of CTAs and keep them all consistent as far as design and layout inside of your posts. Custom taxonomies are great for categorizing information on the front end of the website, but as you've seen inside this tutorial, they can actually be really handy for being able to organize content on the back end as well. In this tutorial, we've used the custom taxonomy to not only show or hide a generate press element, but to show or hide different ACF fields. It just goes to show you how powerful creating different kinds of custom taxonomies is. And with the free version of ACF, you have all of this at your fingertips without spending an extra penny. If you really enjoy content on dynamic content, I got a couple different videos popping up here that you can check out next. And be sure to go ahead and hit subscribe so you can catch the next video I upload, and we'll see you in that one.